This is a ritual in all sorts of societies where you generate pseudo-kinship as a means of generating peace. One example, traditional Bedouin society. Here's what happens. You have two groups who have been having tensions, who've been fighting, who've been having some clan warfares, whatever, and they have now figured out a way to have a treaty, to stop fighting with each other. Here is the ritual that is done which is a bunch of the old guys from each of the groups come and they sit down and they start exploring each other's genealogies. Who was your great-grandparents? Who was your great-great-great? Going through all of that. And at some point, one of them has the job of making up an imaginary relationship between the two groups. Chuck, are you kidding? I had a great-great-grandfather named Chuck also. We're relatives. A ritual absolutely transparent that people go through there to generate a supposed rationale for relatedness. A big ceremony of pseudo-kinship. Another one is seen in some Aboriginal groups in Australia. Apparently this is a motif that pops up often in Aboriginal rock art and apparently is a symbolic version of this phenomenon. Okay, you've got somebody wandering through the great back of beyond there, and there are very few sources of water. There's a water hole up ahead. You've just walked 10 miles to come to it, and you suddenly notice a stranger coming towards the water hole from the opposite direction. And this is a water hole that is essential for you to survive. You're not going to be able to walk far enough to get to the next water hole. Maybe what you should do, just in case this person winds up being aggressive, is you should attack him first. A virtual guarantee of aggression. Here's a ritual that has been worked out instead that bypasses it. The two individuals sit down around the water hole and each starts giving their genealogy. I am the son of, who's the son of, who's the son of, into the next bar mitzvah, whatever. Oh, we're relatives, let's share some water. They don't fall for it for a second, but it's a totally artificial mechanism of pseudo kinship to make it possible for two strangers to share this absolutely essential for life resource and not try to kill each other. Same sort of thing, pseudo-kinship, in all sorts of historical examples of revolutions. Revolutions generating pseudo-kinship, what is often the term people use for each other after the revolution? Sisters, brothers, unite pseudo-kinship terms. In French, for example, there's the informal two tense and there's the more formal one and you're supposed to use the more formal one with sort of in the outside world. And in the aftermath of the French Revolution, it became illegal to address somebody, a stranger, in the formal tense. It always had to be with the familial two sense there, pseudo-kinship. 